Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. My name's Elaine and I'm Ellie Welly Stitcher both here on YouTube and also over on Instagram. And hello, welcome back to those of you that have um, stuck with me and um, come back to join me after having been away since the last time I filmed was the 23rd of September. I've never left it that long before, never. Um, so yeah, thanks ever so much if you stuck with me and not disappeared and thought, well, she's gone, she's not coming back again. Um, so thank you for that. And thank you to my new subscribers because I have picked up a few um, in my absence. So thank you, thank you for coming and joining me and spending a bit of your time with me. Much appreciated. Right, okay, so it has been a hot minute since I was last with you um, and I've, I've been really keen to, to come and film but I just haven't had time basically. So um, I have got a bit of a, a life update. As you can see, I am filming in a different location today. We are in my new craft room. Um, it's not completely organised yet um, but... Um, yeah, I, I will do a little video at the end uh, of just where it's at at the moment, really. Um, I won't do a full craft room tour. I'll do that once I've had the opportunity to organise it a bit further. And I am currently waiting for a piece of furniture to arrive to add a bit of storage to this room. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is my new space and I am very, very happy with it, to say the least. So, yeah, so for anybody who's not interested in my move, so let me just say as well, Kriso or Kimru, so welcome to Wales because, uh, welcome from Wales rather, because I am now filming in, in Anglesey in North Wales because I finally moved. Yay, at last. So, uh, yeah, so that happened um, on the 25th of October, so... Uh, a couple of weeks ago today, actually, because I'm filming this on Wednesday morning. So, yeah, it's been a hot minute, like I say, and I am so pleased to be back. And I have got a few things to show you and um, I've got some plans. I've got a finish. I've got a new start. Um, yeah, all the stuff. I've read a couple of books. Um, yeah, so... Let's get into it, shall we? Right, so I'll start with my finish. So the finish that I have, I have showed on Instagram. So just for a change, because I am absolutely rubbish at keeping up with things on Instagram. I really am. But um, I did post a picture of my finish of this because I was super proud of it. Um, so we'll start with that. So this was a stitch along that I was doing with my lovely friend Stitchy Sally. Um, and this is affectionately known as the Big Ass Pink House Sal. <laughs> and we have both finished it now. So this is kind of what it looked like, looks like from the chart. God, I feel a bit of a newbie today because I haven't filmed for so long. I'll put a picture in of where you saw this last time. And I'm pleased to say it's finished. Well, it's sort of finished. I'm calling it a finished. I have missed something off. Um, and it wasn't until I saw Sally's finish, I realised that I'd left it off. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not going back to do it now. I'm just not. I'll, sh I'll show, show you in a minute what I left off. So here it is in all its glory. Yay, finito. So I made my own changes to this one. So I recharted it with my mum's name on it. Um, and I altered the verse slightly as well. Um, I So I've changed the verse too. So it says, the loss of my pets is much. The loss of a father is more. The loss of a mother is such. No other can restore. Um, and I know Sally completely changed the verse on hers in uh, in memory of her mum. So and her verse is beautiful. 
So I stitched this on 36 count platinum by Zweigart and I used all of the called for over dyed threads for this one. And I've super enjoyed stitching this. Sally and I started this as a New Year's Day start, obviously on the 1st of January this year. And I finished it. Uh, when did I finish it? Uh, ba, 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 on the 20th of October. So, um, yeah, so pretty much it took just under 10 months to do. So, yeah super pleased with it and in case you haven't spot, spotted it the bit that i've missed off <laughs> there's a like one of these doodad things one of these should be here and i haven't i haven't put it in i d I'm, i must have got distracted and forgot to do it i'm not that bothered i might go back and put it in i might not i think it looks absolutely fine without it um i now need to find a frame to put this one in because i am going to frame it but yeah i am super super pleased with this as you can see it hasn't been ironed or anything yet so apologies for that i i don't iron things until i've i'm ready to fully finish them but yeah so pleased with it and like i said i know sally has showed hers as well so if you've not watched stitchy sally before please go over and have a look at her channel because uh, yeah, she has some fabulous projects that she's working on. So yeah, really enjoyed that stitch along and um, have got another stitch along that I'm doing with, um, with Sally at the moment. So I had, I had a new start and Sally's doing, done a new start as well. Um, and then we've got a new start in December as well, which I'm really looking forward to. So, so yeah, so that's my finish. That's the only finish I've had, guys. Um, so I'm quite pleased. I'm quite pleased to have a finish. Right. Let me show you my book a day. So I'll go back to September because, like I say, last time I filmed was uh, the 23rd of September. So it's actually been one four five ugh, six weeks pretty much since i last filmed so yeah that's like normally i film every three weeks so i've sort of missed one in the middle so to speak so this is how september finished for me so i stitched almost every day i think yeah i had i don't know i had three days where i didn't stitch actually in september for whatever reason i do not know i cannot remember now um so yeah so that's where september ended up and i completed my whip go um goals for september um and then obviously we were then went into october this is what october looked like for me so i stickered it up spookily and um I had quite a few days where I didn't stitch and that was because I was obviously in the middle of moving house. So I had one, two, three, four, five, five days where I didn't stitch. And there were a lot of days where I did stitch, but I didn't stitch very much. Um, and I can say that actually for the majority of October, I was almost a monogamous stitcher. I only stitched three projects throughout the entire month. Most unlike me, most unlike me. Um, uh, the whip go goals for October were 14, uh, numbers 14 and number 19. 14 for me was to stitch on smalls for five days. Didn't do it, didn't do it. I managed three days. And the other one was number 19 was the stitch on spring for five days. Didn't do that either. Didn't even pick up a spring project. Oh dear, I had good intentions of doing it. But yeah, I, I, you know, life just got in the way as it does sometimes. So, so that's where we ended up with October. So November, so far I have stitched every day. Some days it's not been very much at all, I have to say. Um, I really need to get back on it, basically. 
but here's where I am with November so far. So obviously I've got whip go for last month to complete if if I do. Uh, and the whip go numbers Jessie Marie called for this month three and eight. So three for me is to stitch three thousand stitches on a full coverage. I will I will do that. And number eight, ironically, is the stitch Halloween for five days. Um, and I've got loads of um, loads of Halloween projects that I can stitch on. So I'm quite sure that I will be able to achieve that. OK, so I mean, can you believe we're in November? Can you believe it? Seriously, uh, you know, where, where's the year gone? And yeah, so much seems to have happened this year. For me anyway, it definitely does feel like that. So yes, I nearly finished with my book of days for the year. Right, I'll put that out of the way over here. Okay, so now we'll get into my whips. Um, sorry if I keep glancing off, but my dog, one of my dogs is outside because he's practically permanently living in the garden at the moment because he loves it so much. And he is, <laughs> there's, You'll see at the end when I show you a little video in my craft room, if, if you hang around long enough to watch that. But he keeps looking through the window at me. But I know if I go and let him in, he won't want to come in. So, hey-ho, there we go. <clears throat> I digress. Okay, so, um, uh, since I last saw you, so f f towards sort of the end of September, like I said, I filmed on the 23rd, so we sort of still had another week of September to go. And I did mix about with different projects that um, I was working on then. Uh, so that's the majority of what I've got to show you. But then since then, I really more or less concentrated on just two. So let's go into my whips. Now, the, the project that I'm going to show you next is the one that I have stitched on by far and away the most. By far. Um, and I almost have stitched on it monogamously as well. Um, it's the only full coverage project that I've stitched since I last saw you. Um, and I'm really going for a finish with this one. I did post a progress picture up of this one um, a little while ago on Instagram. Um, I am just terrible for posting on Instagram, really terrible. So I do apologize. Somehow or other, and I only noticed it this morning, actually, I've managed to end up with a thousand followers on Instagram. I'm like, a bit gobsmacked, really, because I don't, I'm just not active enough on there. I love seeing other people's things, and I do try and like things as much as I can. But yeah, I'm just, well, blown away with that. So if you follow me on Instagram, thank you. You won't see too much activity from me because I am terrible. But um, but yeah, I do try and I do appreciate you following me. So anyway, the project that um, I have spent the most time on, um, and sometimes it's not been much. It might be the odd hundred stitches here and there. And then all of a sudden I'll do a wallop of a load of stitches. So the other day, for example, I did um 750 stitches in a, in a session so right the project i'm referring to is of course cheese delivery um so this is charted by pain free crafts and the artwork is by chris dunn i'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw this last time And I can't remember what percentage I was at last time. But anyway, this is in the Q-snap still at the moment, guys. And I'm not going to take it out of that now until it's finished. But, you know, you'll get a pretty good idea of where I'm at with it. It's only really the top bit that's, um, that you can't see. So here I am with cheese delivery now. Look at that. Isn't it looking good? I'll tell you what, it looks amazing on camera, actually. It really does. So, all I've got left to do is this section here. 
So since I last saw you, I think I was working this way and then I decided to come back and bring this side in as well until we meet in the middle. So I've got a bit up here to do um, and a bit around here. Anyway, get this guys, get this. I am now at 98.25%. So I've only got 1.75% to go. Um, I have completed just over 21,000 stitches. I think 21,100. Um, I have only got 2,100 stitches to go. Yes. This will, unless something really drastic happens, this will be a finish this month. I will have this one to show you next time as a finish. I'm pretty confident. So yeah, so this is stitched on 28 count easy guide and I'm stitching this one uh, two over one tenth stitch. But yeah, oh, it's so chuffed with it, look at it. So, so chuffed. I, I, I haven't decided yet whether to be brave. I think I'm gonna frame um, Pink House Sampler myself. I have framed smaller pieces. That'll be the biggest one that I've ever framed myself. And then if I'm pleased with how it comes out, I might frame this one myself. I might get um, get a frame from Picture Frames Express and have a go at lacing it and doing it myself. Um, I do believe, I have been told that there is a framers on, um, on the island um, somewhere. But... Um, or if anybody can recommend uh, a framers to me, uh, that would be useful. Obviously a framers that's in the UK, um, etc. But yeah, really, really pleased with this one. It's nearly finished, which is just as well, because I do love stitching this project and I do think I'm really going to miss it when I finish, when I do finish it. Um, but I'm also very keen. I haven't picked up any of my other full coverage projects now since a good couple of months ago. And I'm very keen to get back to them. So, but yeah, super, super, super happy with this one. So that's cheese delivery. I'm just going to put that behind me out of the way. Right. Okay. That, like I say, was the only full coverage that I um, stitched. So let me show you what else I stitched. So back in September, it was sampler September and I had every intention of at least touching once all of my samplers. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. That was a proper fake plan. That was, believe me. Um, I did, however, touch a few of them. So Pink House Sampler came out quite a lot in September. Um, and then I had out just for one stitchy session, I stitched on um, Charlotte Frost by the Scarlet House. So this is Charlotte Frost 1846. Like I say, it's by the Scarlet House. I do hope the light's okay without me having my ring light on i don't like putting it on because um because of the glare on my glasses i don't like the reflection i have got a window here that's open i've got another one over there that's closed at the moment so you'll just have to bear with me if the lighting's no good this time when i come to edit this um i'll have a play about with it and see what i can do for next time anyway so this is Charlotte Frost. I'll put a picture in of where you saw this last time. And like I say, I only did one bit of a stitchy session on this one. Here I am with it now. So all I've been doing with this one is I thought what I do, I'll come round with the border basically. So that's what I've done. I've just done a little bit round the border in the hope that <laughs> obviously I'll get round and it will me and then I'll be happy. So I am stitching this one using all of the called for NPIs or needlepoint silks and they are beautiful, absolutely beautiful to stitch with. 
uh, and I'm stitching this one one over two and this is the call for fabric this is 37 count corn tassel by um, access commodities so yeah I like this fabric actually it's a little bit um, it's a bit stiffer than a Swigart fa fabric um, but I do, I do quite like it so yeah so that's where we are with that one so not a lot um, but we've done a little bit to bring that board around so um, the next one I worked on uh, well it may be the next one I worked on I can't remember now um, but I worked on it in September again this was just for one day um, this is a stitch along that I was doing with some of the ladies from the Essex Needles retreat from last year um, so joining me in the stitch along with this one was Crafting Kirsty, who has finished this and her finish looks magnificent I have to say um, Penelope underscore pins from Instagram Janet Dodd from Instagram and there was somebody else um, Bronte Stitcher from uh, Instagram so we have all been stitching uh, GGR's Morris Dancer uh, this is a picture of part of the reproduction sampler it's not the greatest picture in the world by the way this one but that's yeah that's a picture of the actual sampler I will put a picture in of where you saw this last time. And I have got this one out of the QSNAP. And believe it or not, I did iron this one as well. It was so, so wrinkled up. I actually did go and iron this one. Now, this is a really big piece. So... Here's where I am with it. Basically, since I saw you last time, I've been working on that tree in the middle of this piece. I love stitching this. When I get this piece out, I really love, love stitching this. So yeah. And one decision that I have made, so let me just talk about this a minute. Uh, I still haven't been brave enough with mine. There's some chain stitch. You've got to chain stitch a heart around the word in here. And I, I'm going to do that, but I still haven't been brave enough to do it. And there is some one over one wording down. Uh, I think it goes either side of this tree. Um, and I'm the jury's out on that one for me. I haven't decided whether I'm going to bother putting that wording in or not. Because when I actually look at the actual sampler, I can't see that wording on here. And I'm, I don't feel that it particularly, it's one over one, this wording. So the wording here was one over one as well. Um, I'm not overjoyed about the thought of doing that one over one wording if I can get away with it. So I may not do that. So with this um, piece, and as you can see, it's flipping enormous. Look at the size of this. And actually, if you think mine's enormous, please check out Kirsty's finish because um, she stitched hers on a 27 count. This is a 36 count. Um, and hers is enormous. It is a real bed sheet. So mine's, mine's a mere blanket in comparison. But um, I'm stitching this on, yeah, it is a 36 count. I think it's probably closer to a 38 count because I over dyed it myself. Um, and I'm using a mixture of the DMC conversion and some of the over dyed threads. So uh, I have used in the, this flower down here, which is in satin stitch, I have used mostly over dyed in that. The cherubs are stitched in the over dyed, so um, the called for DMC for them was completely the wrong colour, in my opinion. Um, so I did use, I think it's Weeks Dye Works Cobble Peach, 
or classic colour words, cobble peach. Anyway, whoever makes cobble peach, it, it's it's their their thread. But yeah, that's where we are with Morris Dancer. I really want to get that out again soon, but then I, I want to get all my projects out again soon. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Right, and then so my whip go one of my whip go goals for october was to stitch on a small for five days i did manage three days and the project that i chose to stitch on was another stitch along and i think i'm the last one to finish this and i still haven't finished it so um this is my annual stitch along that i do with again crafting kirsty um stitching whip it uh Alison Ali Stitcher both from Instagram and um this year we were joined by uh a lovely lady called Laurel as well who I think is gonna join us in future stitching fancy blackets so this was this year's fancy blackets sale so um fancy blackets October ride by Pinebury Lane this is what it looks like when it's finished now with this one, I have got this one. I'll put a picture in of what you, what it looked like last time you saw it. Um, basically, let me just take this side out of the off the cue snap a minute out of the right, so you can see it a little bit better. Bear with. One moment. just so I can show you what I have done. So, here is where I am with it. So I'm not, you know, I'm not a million miles off with this one. I've just got a moon and the other half of this border to put in really, um, and then it will be finished. So I am stitching this on um, 36 count dapple. I think it's dapple. In fact, I'm almost certain it's dapple. 36 count dapple by picture this plus and I have used all of the called for threads which are all DMC um, and this is stitch one over two so yeah I have every intention of picking this one up again shortly yeah it is dapple actually I've got it on got it on the um, fabric still so I'm going to pick this one up again soon I've nearly finished this second cat at the moment over here so that's where we are with October ride. So yeah, I only managed three out of the five days that I needed. I intended to do five days on that and get it finished basically, but obviously that didn't happen. So it had three days. Right, um, then the next one I worked on, I'm saying the next one I worked on, but they're not particularly in any great order at the moment. So uh, back in September again, I think I had to stitch on an autumn project for five days. Uh, and the one I chose to stitch on was Autumn by the Cricut Collection. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. Lots of people have stitched this. And lots of people have loved stitching this as well. And that includes me. I love stitching this too. <laughs> So I will put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And I haven't done a massive amount on this. You know, if I cracked on a bit, I could probably finish this. Um, this is where I am with it now. So basically, I've worked a bit more on that U, this U over here, is what I did. Yeah, so I haven't got too much to go on this one, actually. Definitely be ready to hang in my house for next autumn. So, and then once I finish this one, I've already done summer. Um, once I finish this one, I think I might do the spring one next and then the winter one last. And there's a reason for that. So I have... And I've told you guys this before, those of you that have been with me some time. 
I have got all the fabrics that I want to use for each of the seasons. Um, but I made a bit of an error and it was only when I was packing up my fabric ready to move that I realised I'd made an error. So um, all of these are stitched on 28 count. So they're quite big, but I wanted them all, all on 28 count because I'd started the first one, which was summer, was the first one I stitched. I did that on 28, so I thought, well, you know, I want to keep them all the same. Not that they're ever going to be displayed all at the same time. Um, but I thought I want them all the same size, really. So uh, so I thought I'd bought 28 count fabric for all of them. So this one is on um, 28 count linen. This is My Das by Chromatic Alchemy. And then I've got a 28 count um for spring can't remember what it's called at the minute but it's a sparkly's fabric and then the one i've got for winter is called tempest and it's again by chromatic alchemy and i thought i'd bought it in a 28 count and i haven't i bought it in a 32 count so obviously it will make the project a little bit smaller and i don't want that so i've decided i i will still stitch it on that fabric because i really like it um, but I need to go and get that uh, 28 count piece. Anyway, this is, uh, yeah, 28 count Midas, which is the, uh, an opalescent version um, from Chromatic Alchemy. And look how wasteful I am with fabric. Seriously. It's really naughty. But, yeah. And I'm using most of, I've used the DMC conversion. This calls for a couple of silken colours in it. And I haven't used those. So I've gone completely DMC with it. But I do love this project. Really like it. So that's where we are with that one. Um, right, next one I worked on was a new start that you saw last time I filmed uh, and I only did one stitchy session on this one but I can't wait to get back to this project actually so um, I'll put a picture in of what this one looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time so This is the Greenhouse of Oddities by Lola Crow. This was a stitch along that Lola Crow did earlier this year. Um, the stitch along's finished now, but I think I bought it when she got around to doing part 10. I saw it almost finished. Somebody had almost finished it. I think it might have been um, Dawn actually from DM's Crafty Vortex. I saw her finish on Instagram um and I, i'm just blown away by it so i had to go and buy it obviously uh so i've had one stitchy session on this since i last saw you and i've just done a little bit more of the framework of the roof of the greenhouse i really like this project a lot a lot and i love this fabric as well uh, this is um, a 36 count, I do believe. I'll be able to tell you. Yeah, this is a 36 count linen from uh, Coffee Craft Fabrics. She doesn't name her fabric, so there isn't a name for this one, but it's a stunning piece of fabric. I love this. So, yeah, so that's where I am with that one. Maybe this could be my... Halloween project for five days although I've got lots of Halloween projects to get back to to be fair right that's that one and then finally my final bit of stitching was my new start so um, since I last saw you uh, I had a birthday it was a big birthday um, so I'm 60 now 60 how did that happen where's that time gone seriously <laughs> oh dear so uh anyway um thank you for all the ha happy birthday wishes that i got and i i got low so thank you so much 
Um, and I also got some lovely happy mail as well, which I will come to shortly. But anyway, you know, big birthday requires a big birthday start, doesn't it? Um, so I, a few months ago, um, Long Dog Samplers brought out um, Saga, which is ginormous, I have to say. But um, I fell in love with it, absolutely fell in love with it. It had always been my intention that I was going to stitch the pointed fifth um, after I finished the long dog I've got on the go at the moment. Um, but when I saw Saga, that kind of blew that one out of the water, really. And uh, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to have that as my birthday start. So I was joined in my birthday start by Alison the Stitching Whippet on Instagram. And also by my lovely friend, Stitchy Sally, who very kindly has started a long dog as well and it's her very first one. Um, so there is a couple of hashtags for anybody stitching a long dog. If it's your first one, I think Amanda Alba Stitcher came up with a hashtag for, I think it's my first long dog sale, something like that. Um, and then my hashtag for anybody who's stitching a long dog, be it your first one or your 10th one it really doesn't matter just let's let's do all the long dogs um so the hashtag I, i've got for that is let's get the dogs out sal so um yeah i was gonna put who let the dogs out you know as in the song but i thought no let's get the dogs out so um lots of people have joined in with um with their samplers uh, and then I got invited to join an Instagram uh, chat for people that are um, stitching Saga. So I've joined that, which has been a bit helpful, actually, because I have yet to post my pictures of my progress on Instagram. This is what I mean. I am terrible, um, but I will do do so. But anyway, I joined the group and somebody gave me the heads, the lady, I think, who's who runs the group. I think she's called Stitch Ecology, Stitch Ecology, Stitch Ecology. Uh, anyway, she um, said to me, watch out if you try and put Saga into Pattern Keeper, it's a bit of a pain. Um, so I thought and she gave me the instructions of what I needed to do. And I tried it and I can't do it. So <laughs> I've had to put it on good notes. Um, my other long dog that I've got, I do, I have got that on Pattern Keeper and I do use it on Pattern Keeper. But I do still have to have it on good notes as well because Pattern Keeper doesn't show you the back stitch. Um, and with Saga, I think there's something like 4,900 back stitches on Saga as well as obviously the cross stitch. So at the moment, I've got it on Good Notes, which is not my cho preferred choice, if I'm really honest. I prefer Pattern Keeper because it shows me my progress as well. Um, but it'll do, it'll do. And I, I desperately wanted to start it on my birthday. So it's a bit of a small start, um, but this is where I am with it. So hopefully I'll put a picture of Saga, the completed one. Um, in here so you can see it if you haven't seen it before uh, and this is my start so I've started top left with it um, as you can see I'm on the first sort of arch if you like so other people are far ahead of me so Alison the Stitching Whip it has put her progress up this morning and she'd done loads and then um, the talking dog stitcher on Instagram, she put a picture of hers on. She'd finished the first arch, and I was like, "Good grief!" So, seriously, some some of you guys, you're just such fast stitchers. I am not. I hasten to add, but you know, I put plod along at my own pace. Um, so I'm stitching this one on uh, a piece of fabric that. Um, Megan from Coffee Craft Fabrics, uh, she custom did this piece for me. It is an enormous piece of fabric. This is a 36 count even weave. 
um, and the floss that I'm using this is a silk and it's by Mrs Sadus and it's called Scale and it is just such a gorgeous colour it is lightly variegated so it goes from this turquoisey blue into sort of some lilacs etc um just trying to think if i can show you oh I, I, when i show you my craft room at the end i've got some hanging up so i'll show you them but yeah so this is like a steely sort of color this fabric and it's like slightly mauled and it's not not overly mottled so it doesn't detract from the actual picture so yeah so that's my my new start on saga it's a long way to go with that one saga is big it's over a hundred thousand stitches so yeah it's not going to be finished anytime soon but yeah so thank you everybody that's joining me on um on on stitching your long dogs because i love all long dog samplers and I think Jules does such a variety, um, you know, different types of sampler as well. It's just brilliant to see everybody's progress on them. Right, and that's it. That is all of my stitching. So let's move on to haul next. Actually, let me do happy mail first. Let me do happy mail. So I have got um, two lots of Happy Mail. So one lot of Happy Mail um, came from one of my viewers. She won a giveaway from me um, a couple of months ago. And, um, and she said to me, oh, I'd really like to send you something as a thank you. I said, oh, that's really nice of you. Um, it's really not necessary. If you win it, one of my giveaways, you don't have to send me anything. I, it's certainly not expected by any means. But, um, you know, she said, I'd like to send you something. I haven't asked if I can use her name, so I'm not going to do that. But anyway, um, this package arrived at my new address because I said, well, I'm in the middle of moving at the moment. So, um, yeah, in fact, her little parcel that she sent me was the first thing that arrived at my new house so that was nice wasn't it so i have thanked her but i just want to thank her again on here because really i was just so delighted with what she sent me really so um can't thank you enough thank you for your kindness she sent me a little um a little bag that she'd obviously made herself so let me show you that first isn't this cute look so you could either put a little project in here or you know you can use it as a notions pouch it's lovely and she's used like sparkly vinyl and oh i just yeah and little birds in there and it's super well made much better much made much nicer than than i can make when i make mine hers is much neater so yeah really pleased really pleased with that then she sent me uh, a couple of threads and these are um madeira threads that i've never used madeira threads before so i don't know don't know what they're like but you know i'm sure i can give them a go at some point and they're a couple of metallics so one's a metallic blue and the other one's a metallic silver so that's those and then she sent me this cute needle minder on a lovely floss tag actually with she put a little a little note on the tag on the back which is and it's such a pretty little tag but yeah that needle minder little cactus isn't he cute full of pins <laughs> and then she sent me this that she'd made and i was oh it's just too cute how cute is he or she she's pink so maybe it's a she i don't know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter these days does it so there we go how cute is that with made with love on the back isn't that lovely really really sweet 
So thank you so much. He's going to pride a place in my um, craft room. So yeah, lovely. So I was really blown away by that. And then, and then. So I got some lovely cards um, for my birthday. So thank you to those of you that sent me a card. Um, I got a couple of birthday gifts from some of my stitchy friends, which was really nice. So um, the first person to send me, she sent me um, a lovely moving in card as well. I haven't got any of my cards with me. They're in the house. Sorry about that. But um, my friend Teresa, a little stitcher, gifted me a chart. Um, it's a PDF. So uh, I will put a picture in hopefully here of the chart that she gifted me which is a little Stacy Nash chart um, and I love it and I can't wait to stitch it. So I have of course thanked Teresa so thanks. Thank you T, I will stitch that sooner rather than later because yeah I was delighted to receive that. And then I got some through the post happy mail from my lovely friend Stitchy Sally. So, and I was just blown away, seriously blown away. Honestly, when, when anybody gives me something that they made themselves like that little owl, um, and I've had a couple of things in the past um, that have been gifted to me that somebody's actually made, I, you know, I just so appreciate that, really, because to take the time to make me something means an awful lot to me, really. So my friend, Stitchy Sally, she gifted me a chart. Now, I can't show it to you because she's gifted me the chart and it hasn't got a picture with it. Uh, I can tell you it is a little sheep chart. She knows me too well. And... Um, and she made me, and I know she's shown you this on Instagram, and she knows that I'm super delighted with it. But uh, again, this this is going pride of place in my craft room. So Sally made me this little hanging, saying friends with two sheep. Look at that! Oh my god, it's amazing. And you know when Sally shows her finishes on her, her videos and she shows when she's fully finished something and they always look amazing. Sally's finishing is amazing. I can vouch for that in real life. It is amazing. I'm so delighted with this. There's backing fabric she shoes, which is just perfect. But yeah, how lovely, lovely is that? So Sally, I'm super delighted to get this, super delighted. So thank you. So yeah, all of those of you that gave me, gifted me something, um, either as thank you or for my birthday, I, I, I just, I feel really blessed to have such great friends, really. Um, and what a fabulous community we have that people would, you know, that your friends would do these things for you. Just, wow. Thank you, thank you. Right, so that was my happy mail and it did make me very, very happy, I have to say. Okay, so haul, I do have haul because of course I have haul. Uh, just because I moved house didn't mean I, I didn't go shopping, of course I did. Right, okay, let me show you. So uh, just before I moved, the lovely Pauline at Sobe Bags on Instagram put up some new bags, uh, and, you know, and I just can't resist. I just can't. Every time Pauline puts up bags, I buy them. So <laughs> anyway, she did some Christmas themed ones this time. So I bought two bags off of Pauline. Um, this one. Look at the Santas. So this is a Teresa Kogut fabric. Um, got, uh, I'll just show you inside. Just a plain, a plain lemony colour fabric inside. 
Oops. That's gorgeous, isn't it? So I've got that one. And then I also got this one with the reindeers on. Again, this is a Teresa Cogat fabric. Do love Teresa Cogat fabrics. Uh, this one inside again is with the plain lemony coloured fabric. But isn't it glorious? Honestly, I, ca I can't recommend Pauline's bags enough. Uh, and they hold easily hold an 11 by 11 Q snap. Um, yeah, really, really good bags. And I have got quite a selection of Pauline's bags. Um, and then I, Agnes from Agnes Little Minders did, um, did a drop on her Etsy shop with some Halloween um, themed needle minders. And I really, really wanted a pumpkin and I managed to get one. So uh, there's my little pump, pumpkin. Ooh, let me take him out be easier there he is how cute is he isn't he cute so yeah so that's my latest latest acquisition of Agnes's every time she posts I say not going to look not going to look not going to look looking so yeah clearly I have no willpower whatsoever um, then I bought a few charts. Um, so I bought this one because Just So Sherry showed this on one of her floss tubes. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Sherry's like super popular now. Um, but just in case you haven't gone and seen uh, Sherry, then go check out her channel because, yeah, she's got some brilliant um hang on one second hi everybody i'm back sorry for that interruption i have been gone um since i last saw you for over an hour because um i just had somebody turn i had an electrician that wasn't due until two o'clock this afternoon and he turned up at 12 o'clock so um so apologies for that okay where did i get to i was going through my haul with you so yeah so i bought um this chart which was all the fault of uh just so sherry so this is witch hazel by lardy darna she showed it on her channel and um and i just fell in love with it basically so so i bought that and then the next chart i bought and i got these ones from hmm where did I get them from? It might have been Arts and Design, actually. I think it was Arts and Design. And I bought um, this one by Scattered Seed Samplers, um, which I just fell in love with when I saw it. So this is Winter Stash. Isn't it cute? Look at those two little squirrels. Just gorgeous. I've got quite a few charts by scattered seed samplers to stitch actually but yeah really like that and this one only uses two colors it only uses two dmc's uh 611 and 3799 i could start this so i'm pretty sure i've got both of those we have been joined in here by my dogs by the way my husband's gone out and uh and the dogs have come to join me in my craft room at the moment so if you hear feet pitter pattering about it will be them right and then uh i purchased a couple of things from one two three stitch so um i really really wanted this um book when it came out so of course i ordered it so this is uh hello hello autumn from Teresa koga and I love pretty much all the charts in here. Absolutely love this booklet. Let me just, I mean, there's that sampler on the front and then, I mean, let me show you this. Look at him. 
Isn't he cute? I think he's glorious. And then, yeah, can you hear the sound of tiny feet? They're all sitting down around me. Just such, there's, I think, eight, um, eight patterns all together. I mean, look at these two. Harvest Ted and Harvest Tina, aren't they cute? So yeah, really, really pleased with this book. I have got um, a Teresa Coca chart to do, and I, I really love this one as well. Look at that. But, um, <clears throat> which is gonna be a start that I do with Stitchy Sally in December for her birthday. So yeah, I really like this book. Really pleased I got that one. And she's got another book out as well that I really like. I'm trying to think what it's called. I can't think of it. But anyway, I'm really, really pleased with that. <coughs> and then, of course, I bought next year's Book of Days for 2024. So this is by Needlework Press. I got this from 123 Stitch as I was, I got my eye on that Teresa Kogut booklet. So I... This had come in stock, so I bought this at the same time. So, um, yeah, I, I first did Book of Days last year, so in 2022, which I've got filed away somewhere. <coughs> I've really enjoyed doing it this year again. Um, and, of course, I will enjoy doing it again next year. So, so yeah, so that's my Book of Days for next year. And that's all my haul. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Since I last saw you, I ended up with a terrible cough. And it went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I still get keep getting it a little bit now. It's not as bad as it was, but it was absolutely horrendous. Okay, so that is all of my stitching, I think. <coughs> oh. Okay, so that's all my stitching. Life then, so let's do a bit about life. So we moved on the 25th of October in the end, so that's why I went quiet for a little while because, you know, it, it's bad enough, isn't it, moving house when you're just moving down the road, but when you're moving 300 miles away from where you used to live, it's a bit of a big event, actually. <laughs> So, you know, it went as well as it could go, really. Uh, you know, everything arrived here okay. Uh, all my stitchy stuff arrived okay. Most of which came in the car with me, to be fair. Um, <clears throat> my husband and I uh, had to do it, had to move sort of separately, as in like he left first in the morning from our old house, packed the dogs up in the car, <clears throat> and set off for Wales so that he could come and collect the keys from the estate agent here, etc. while I stayed with the removals men at our old house and um, locked up, you know, clean, did a last clean up and locked up after they'd finished. Um, and then I left as well. So my husband's journey here wasn't too bad and he got here at about three, half three in the afternoon. My journey was terrible. Um, I left um, Essex at quarter to 12 in the afternoon um, and I didn't get to here until seven o'clock that night. Um, and I only stopped for a couple of five minute sort of toilet breaks on the way. I didn't stop and have anything to eat or anything. I just went for it. So yeah, so that, um, that was a bit of a pain, a seven hour drive to get here. But um, yeah, and then obviously since then, the last two weeks have been um, unpacking everything. Uh, we had to go and buy some new bits and pieces. In fact, we are still in the middle of buying new bits and pieces because I've moved from a smaller house to a bigger house. So, um, so yeah, so that's involved <laughs> having to, increase the amount of furniture that I've got and all that kind of thing 
um, we've met quite a few of our neighbours. Um, the first night I got here, the chap that lives over the road um, came over and said hello and uh, introduced himself. And you know, what's really novel is I've met quite a lot of people now in, in our new local village um, and everybody's been really welcoming and friendly. Uh, a couple of people have put cards through the door. Um, Halloween, we made sure we'd got some sweets in for the kids and we must have had about 25, 30 kids knock on the door for sweeties, for trick or treat. So the people here are much friendlier than, um, than back in Essex where, you know, for the 16 years in the road that I lived in, um, apart from hello, my neighbours, you know, never really had anything to do with us really. So, so it's really nice to come to somewhere that's got a bit more of a community feel to it. And I'm sure, you know, it's only been two weeks. Um, we've already been invited over the pub for a drink and all that sort of thing that I never would have had before. Um, those of you that follow me on Instagram will have seen that I put some pictures at the weekend. We went to um, an agricultural show that was on literally five minutes down the road from where we are, which was nice. It wasn't just agriculture. I took some pictures of some of the um, <coughs> the bull being judged and there was some sheep and that sort of thing. But there was also handicrafts and a baking competition there was one cross stitch item that was being judged it didn't win i think it went to a knitting um a knitted piece but uh yeah so and i should have took some pictures of that really but anyway I, i'm waffling on now so anyway i am here um i've got moved in uh i've probably I don't know whether I want to go to work yet or not. I um, haven't really decided. I might decide after Christmas whether I really want to go out to work. I've got a bit of work I can do working from home, um, which I haven't had the chance to do yet because literally we've, you know, been too busy unpacking and all that kind of stuff. Um, I took a little video that I filmed before I filmed this today um just of my garden because one of one of the reasons why i absolutely love this house was because of the garden uh, i love the house too don't get me wrong um but yeah the garden was a big big plus um so i took a bit of a video of that and my new chickens um i think uh i'll, I'll add that little video on at the end for anybody who's interested I'll do a very quick film of my craft room, but it's just to show you, sort of, I've, I've got a piece of furniture that is still to come and I'll, I'll talk about that in my little video that I just filmed for you after this, showing you my craft room. Apart from that, uh, nothing much else has happened. Uh, over the next few weeks, uh, I've got to go back to Essex on the 24th of November. We've got a stitch day the Essex Needles Retreat stitch day on Saturday the 25th of November uh, and we're doing a bit of a secret Santa thing and um, we've got a festive Christmassy meal in the evening so I'm looking forward to that uh, and it, it will seem strange strange to go from here back to Essex very strange um, so yeah and then I, I think it will be into Christmas plans and all that kind of thing and started to think a bit about what I want to do next year stitching wise whether I want to um, do whip go again um, I was really successful with whip go last year which is why I did it again this year but it's fallen off a cliff just this last month because of moving and it's kind of I don't know whether to pick it up again whether to bother with it um, next year, whether to just stitch what I want to stitch, whether to focus on some particular projects. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think I should do? Let me know what you think. Right. Um, also, while uh, since I last saw you, so I have read a bit as well. 
so I've just been and picked up my Kindle while I was um, dealing with the electrician man. I'll just tell you what I've been reading since I last saw you. So I think last time I filmed, I told you that I'd just read a book called uh, The Maiden by Cynthia Harrod Eagles, which was the latest one of the Moorland Dynasty. And I think I told you at the time that I'd decided just for the minute to give those a bit of a rest because I've read, you know, quite a lot of them now and I needed a bit of a break from them. So I went on to read a book called The Lost Bookshop by Evie Woods. I quite enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. Uh, I would give it a rating of um, probably three and a half out of five, maybe four out of five. It's well written. I did enjoy it. Um, basically, it's it's got a bit of a love story going on in the background of it. Um, and it's kind of a story that's told in the present time. It's set in Ireland, um, but it also flips back to kind of the 1920s as well. So yeah, it's a good, it's a, you know, it's, it's very readable, very readable. So hence why I'll, I'll go three and a half, four out of five for that one. Um, and then after that, I, I'm currently reading and I've nearly finished a book called Don't Look Away by Rachel Abbott. Um, and I've read all of Rachel Abbott's books in the past, um, and yeah, and I'm enjoying this one uh, as I have done all of her books. So um, yeah, I'm nearly at the end of that. And then uh, it came out yesterday and I'd already pre-ordered it. But uh, the latest offering from Rebecca Yaros, um, Iron Flame, has just come out and has been delivered to my Kindle. And I'm like, uh, can't wait to read it. So uh, if you don't know what I'm referring to, the first book in this series by Rebecca Yarras is called Fourth Wing and it is absolutely one. Well, it is the best book I've read this year. It is. It's just brilliant. Um, and so I pre-ordered the follow up to it. The other book that I recently had delivered to my Kindle, I also had as a pre-order and it was the latest offering from Ken Follett, which is called The Armour of Light. And it's part of the Kingsbridge series. And I've read all of um, his books that are part of the Kingsbridge, Kingsbridge series. Um, the one that most of you will probably know is Pillars of the Earth, which was made into a TV series. Um, and he's the first book in that particular series. But yeah, can't wait to read that as well. I've got to say the Rebecca Yaris one is going to be next and then it will be Ken Follett and then I'll probably be ready to go back and read um, another one of the Moorland Dynasty. So that's where I am with book reading at the moment. I'll tell you what, when I fill my craft room you're going to see my dogs because they're both sitting here. I've got one behind me and one in front of me. Um, and I've got a little fire over here and I, I've just put one bar on on the fire because it's not particularly cold, but um, it just makes it quite nice and cosy in here. Right. Anyway, guys, I think I don't think I've got anything else. I do feel a bit novicey today doing this, but never mind. OK, so I am going to go now I'll do that little video of my craft room and it will be just a little one I will take a bit of a film of my house but not until I've finished with all my furniture so we've still got a rug to lay in the lounge I've still got um, bits and pieces of furniture to arrive once they have and it's completely sorted I will I will fill my house as well so you can get a little look at what that looks like but for today uh hopefully <clears throat> you'll be contented with seeing my garden and my craft room um to the lady who asked me to chart that verse for pink house sampler 
I've honestly been so busy I haven't had the chance to do that yet but I haven't forgotten and I will do that for you I promise for anybody else if you've got any questions um, for me I just want to say as well um, I do apologize if I didn't reply to everybody's comments on my last video I always try and do that because you know I appreciate when you come in you know the least I can do is make the effort to reply back I did heart everybody I think um, you know to show you that I'd read your comments if I didn't reply last time I do apologize but I just was so short of time I just haven't had the opportunity to but um, you know going for please comment to me because I do love reading your comments um, I will do a little giveaway on my next episode, which will be in three weeks, hopefully. Uh, I will do a little giveaway then, just to celebrate the fact that I've moved house, etc. Um, so yeah, so we'll do a giveaway then. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm waffling on now. If you have any comments, I promise I will reply to them this time. And I do love reading your comments, so please comment away. Uh, if you've enjoyed my video give me a thumbs up um, I'd much appreciate that too and um, anyway I I'm miles behind with floss tube as well I'm busy trying to catch up with all the ones that I've missed um, and I've got a whole big load of them to watch so I'm gradually going through those so I'll try and give some floss tube a shout outs um, next time right I'm going now so <laughs> I think I've said quite enough for one episode and it is going to be a bit of a long one by the looks of it so take care of yourselves if you've got any questions to ask please do either email me you know comment below or whatever um, and I'll get back to you so take care of yourselves guys it's really good to be back with you and um, I will see you all again in three weeks time. Take care and happy stitching. Bye for now. So here's just a little video that I take of my garden. This is my, um, here's my new vegetable patch. As you can see, I haven't got anything planted yet, but there will be at some point. I hope I'm not making you too seasick. That's the outside of my craft room. Just over there. It's a bit of the back of the house. Got a summer house over here. I've got lots of storage in the garden for logs and all that kind of thing. There's Prince. Say hi Prince. He absolutely loves this house being out in the garden. I've got a greenhouse over here. Here's my chickens. So the two hens are called Philippa and Gemma. And then we have a cockerel called Howard. I'll just take you in the take you in my chicken run. They're not here at the minute, but we do get visited by a whole population full of pheasants as well and I've got um, a hedgehog that's currently living in one of my outdoor sheds too so the hedgehog has made himself a little home at the back of that shed for the winter so here's the view across the fields at the back of my house The chickens can free roam out here and they do a little bit but yeah it's just fabulous I love it the view from my last house was just um, just of other houses so it's just this is just amazing and part of the reason we wanted to come and live here so yeah here's my girls Philippa and Gemma, Howard. Howard's um, just growing his tail feathers back at the moment, so he looks a bit stumpy on his rear end. So, but he is a very handsome cockerel. He's very friendly too, aren't you, Howard? So, 
yeah that's a little bit of a view of my this is the chicken sheds here they've got quite a lot of living space i am going to get some more chickens at some point to join these ones so so yeah that's just a little video for you just of my back garden okay bye okay so this is going to be i've literally just filled my floss tube update and i'm just gonna very quickly show you a bit of my craft room so as you can see hope's been sitting behind my chair and uh prince is here looking out of the window <laughs> so this is like the entrance to my craft room over here and you can see i've got a couple of my finishes on the wall over here sadly i haven't been able to display um the salem trials this time because i haven't put any of my halloween stuff out this year because we were in the middle of moving at the time so i've got some hoops and things hanging up over there my lovely bag that my lovely friend janet gifted to me and then i've got i've still got to sort things out in here guys so bear with but I've got some shelving over here and I will decorate in here next year because it is a bit tatty, it needs painting, but um, I've got my rip dies up there, some beads and things on the top there and some uh, reels to use. Um, there's my little Al Forest embroidery stitch over there on that shelf and some pin cushions and things. A little my sister gifted me that little sign there Elaine sewing room and then um, I've got sorry if I'm making you a bit giddy I've got a TV over here which was left for me oh, Sanjay the lovely Sanjay from my old hotel gifted me that picture when I was leaving um, excuse the uh, running machine over there but we just didn't have anywhere else to put it so my husband said you're going to have to have it in your craft room unfortunately uh i've got some drawers there and then there's my little fire now where my ring light is over here which is a big blank space and there is a reason for that um so i've ordered i've got an oak welsh dresser coming it's an antique one that i've ordered um, and that's going to go in that space there. So it's going to give me lots of space to display things, etc. And then down by Hope over here, there's a couple of bins of... One's got projects that are kitted up in it um, that I haven't started yet, but they're all kitted ready to go. And the one underneath it has got a load of um, Q-snaps and that kind of thing in. Then I've got my merchant chest over here and I've got, I'll show you all that sort of stuff in detail another time once I've organised it all properly. But I keep my fabric in there, I've got needle miners in there, I've got kits in there, all that kind of stuff. And then you'll recognise my my antique sampler, my Anne Weatherall, because that's who stitched it. Um, from You've seen that in my last craft, craft room back in Essex. Um, and then I've got a few of my stitched pieces over here. Some of them are up in the house as well now. Uh, a few of my pillows and things there. And then I've got my, um, so I had this up in my craft room at my last house. Do you like my little gingerbready witches, aren't they cute? I really love those um yeah and I've got floss drops that I've got from people that during the floss drop challenge that was organized by mama loves you GB I've got uh threads for um one of my projects plus I, my overdides are all over here as well so my gentle arts week style works and classic color works plus some variety of other ones this here and this is terrible guys please like if Teresa watches this she'll cringe she'll be like what have you done to that hank of silk so this is the hank of silk that i'm using for 
saga that I've just started. See how beautiful it is? Glorious, isn't it? Like I say, it's called Scale by Mrs. Sadus. But yeah, I, I need to sort the rest of that hank out. I know, Teresa, please don't shout at me. It looks a mess. But it's not a mess. It's just looped over um, a floss ring at the moment. I've uh, got a couple of nerd hoops that I've just got into using up there. So this is my main shelf where I've got um, fabric batting. I've got yarn. I've got charts all over here. Um, oh, all sorts. Yeah, I've got wool up there. That big box up there has got wool in. That little smaller box there has got um, ribbons, trim, trimmings and all that sort of thing in. That little heart I bought at the uh, that agricultural fair that I went to at the weekend, which I really liked. I thought, oh, I'm going to get that. Creso means welcome, by the way. And then I've got my foam boards and all that sort of thing over there my um crushed walnut shells over there these are all charts all those booklets are full of charts and more there uh, my dmc is stored in there i oh, know it's terrible isn't it yes i know they're all on rings inside there and they're not just dumped in there i hasten to add um up there's my gemini die cut machine um and I've got oh, various sticky back velvet and that sort of thing in there. That's got more wool in it. Um, that little box there has got lots of ribbons and things in it. Spare project bags up there. Just waiting for a project. Um, those bobbin boxes, I've got my full coverage in them. So the top one's face, then the next one down, I think. Blackberry Dragon, the one under that is Alice maybe, and the one under that is Magic Forest. Then I've got a selection of tins over there with various bits in them. My sticker books that I use to sticker up my book of days, plus a few, there's a couple of PNPS magazines there and that kind of thing. Cross Stitch for the Earth by Emma Congdon. Um, the beads up there for my mirabilia that I haven't stitched on in a month of Sundays. Then over here I've got I've got a big bag of Halloween ornament type things that I haven't put out this year. I've got a finished cross stitch in there. I've got a couple of wool knitting whips over there. This, by the way, is a big uh, three-seater sofa that the lady who owned this house asked me if I wanted it. And... Um, I said, yes, please, I can use that. It turns into a king-size double bed. And it might be handy at some point. I've got in that bag there, which is a lovely bag, project bag that I got from um, Kaylee um, of Kaylee Tent Stitch. That's got a couple of finishes in that I need to have a bit of a finishing day and do. A few full coverage whips. There's cheese delivery. Um, these are just the whips I've had out today. And look, this is the mess I get myself into. <laughs> this is my desk. This is the mess I get myself into when I'm filming a floss tube. Look, look at the state. Seriously, I've got to sort all that out and put it away now. My sewing machine is there. It's a window there out onto my garden. And then another window over there. Like I say, I've had the curtains closed for that one. And here's my chair that you see me sitting on. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go, guys. There's my dogs, look. One comfy on the floor down there. One down there. So it's really cosy in my craft room. I really like it in here. And I've got so much space compared to what I had before. There's a box of my whips under there. I've got a box of fabric to sort through under there. Yeah, stuff everywhere. Right, guys, that really is it from me now. Um, so you've had a little bit of a taster of what my my new craft room is like. Like I say, once I've sorted it out properly and got my new dresser in, it would be lovely to show you it again. Okay, take care, guys. Bye.